What's up YouTube, Nick here, Lander Stacks M Army, and today what we're gonna do is we're gonna install a Wild Boar Rad Relocate kit on a 2020 XMR Renegade 1000. Now you can see DICOM takes great care of their packages. No word of a lie, this is how the box showed up. But anyways, we're not here to talk about DICOM. Let's get to it. So we're gonna open up the box. As you can see, I've kinda got the Renegade pre-set up. I took the bumper off as well as the winch plate off. That's the way it shows up. So we're gonna put that on this Let's get to it. I'm going to take the center plastic off. So you just pop these bad boys. Pop these backwards. Take the seat off. Just find it to be easier to sit on this thing and pull this off. Okay, once all the tabs are pulled off, pull that off. Now you can access pretty much everything. Because what's going to happen is all the bolts you need are right here. Now the center plastic and the horn need to come off so that you can take the um, bumper off but you do not need to take the horn off for the uh, install. Obviously the horn will be off so what does it matter but once the horn and the center plastic are off you can get to the two 10 millimeter bolts which are right in here. And then the 13 millimeter bolts, which hold the bumper on, which are down there, right on the inside here. So anyways, bumper's off. Now we're just gonna take the rod off. So that's gonna be two mil 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, so we're gonna work our way. Yes, now we got a 10 mil on both sides. You can begin to slowly but surely. Undo this bolt. Oh, now it's loose. And you got the hose off. Now you just gotta take those 13 mil. Maybe really get you a couple extensions. Go in from the top there. Loosen them off. Right there. Okay, once that one's off, the whole front plastic piece, you can move it up. Enough room. Let's move the rod out of the rubber grommets and slide that out. Oh, I seem to have forgotten this clip here. So, the electrical clip for the fan, I'm just gonna disconnect that. 
And the rest of the rat will empty out. Okay. Like that. Okay, so that's empty. Once your winch is loose, take this. Real simple, you're just gonna line it up so that, that sits right over top. Like so. Well, of course, forgot to make sure that lined up. If you've got a buddy handy, that'll be a lot easier. But we're gonna try and do this two-handed. Slide that through there. Slide that back. Like that. Now the fun process begins. So, may as well start by the easiest ones, which are gonna be the two 13 mils here. this stuff up first. Can I start that off? Yeah, when you're on. just want to start them off so that doesn't slide off on your head while you're working on the rest of it. Now I gotta try to remember where I put all the stuff. There we go. Okay, so that goes the bottom. There's that missing bolt. Anyways, I'm gonna take this. Looks like we will have to take the hook off so we can install the fair lead. Take, get you some pliers. I'm just gonna bend this back to its original shape. Like so. Pull it out. Slide the pin. Still cables free. I'm gonna run this like this. Somehow. <clears throat> okay. Rethink that strategy. There we go. Like that. Put this back on. Slide that back in. Put your cotter pin back in. Like this. Bend it back. Anyways, that's good enough for now. You're gonna make sure the warnings are at the top. Okay. Like so. I grab these big Allen key bolts. So we're gonna grab our 15 ratcheting wrench. Once I can find it. Hey, there we go. Okay, so 15 ratcheting wrench. Just right. So that is a 5 16 Allen key hex wrench, they call it. Stick that on there. Put that in there. Pretty important piece. Right in 
that's why that was so difficult last time. Okay, so that one's on. To the next one. Same task. I'm gonna blindly attach these one. So I get to swap hands for this one. Should be super fun. So again, you just slide it into the hole. Get that straight so you get full range of motion. Okay, once it's on, put the Allen wrench in there. Just slid off. Once you get that side on. Now, the reason why Wild Boar isn't all that popular, so this one is a 13. The reason why Wild Boar isn't all that popular is because of the fact that there's only one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six bolts holding the bottom and there's nothing holding the top. So what I had done to remedy that is I had my buddy fabricate from the stock bumper two handles that come from here and come into the stock bracket so you have some strength coming from the top so that won't break. So these just slide in through here coming from the back. So I'm gonna start these off. Once we got them started. Might have been put back on slightly well. Tighter than finger tight. So taking your bolt, there's a little hole right there. Oop, that slides in. Now on this side, you'll have to worry about the winch, the free spool lever. So you just back your bolt out a bit, stick the nut on it. There you go. So take your 13 mil. Going to find the grooves. Okay. That one's tight. Yeah. 
one's tight. So we're going to switch to our 15s and the Allen wrench. We are going to tighten up these ones. So again, coming in from the top. Tight and on the other side. Now well, that one's tight. Put our extensions back on. Put the 13 mil on. Don't need a wrench for that. And we're gonna tighten these. There you go. So that's tight, solid with the bike. So the bumper's installed. Now the fun part begins. So we are going to relocate the hoses woo, and the rad. So easiest part is to install this. So that just slides down in here. Make sure your rubber grommets are still attached to the rad. Now what you get to do is drill a hole in your plastic, which is super fun. Now I've done this Sorry, I've done about three of these relocates. So, I know that you absolutely 100% want to make sure that you're drilling the right thing in the right place. So, make sure your plastic's back on. Not worried about that side right now. So we're gonna move that over. So, press that in. So we are going to use one and three quarter inch. We're gonna come up right through here. So once again, just make sure that your plastic is pressed in so you're drilling in the right place. But essentially we're just gonna reuse the stock hole, but we're gonna make it slightly larger. Okay, once you do that, This piece, slide it right up to there. And we're gonna slide it down through here. Connect it to the stock hose, like so. So that's connected in through there. This hose will come up like so, and we'll connect there. So we are going to grab our box cutter, which is somewhere in this heap of tools that I have yet to clean. We 
are going to cut it right here. It's not very hard to cut radiator hose depending on how much how many layers it has. But we're going to slip it on right like that. There you go. So that is the lower radiator hose done and connected. Now we will do the upper radiator hose. So this one's a little bit trickier because, well, maybe not. So that comes in through there. So if we can just slip this through. Just like that without pinching it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that slightly larger. So these protect the hose from getting perforated by the plastics you just cut. So we're gonna obviously utilize them. So we're gonna slip this back through. See so, you now when I did mine, I brought my right radiator hose through these. Now, if you take your stuff off a lot, that is extremely annoying. Okay, so we're gonna make that slightly smaller. So I'll start this off where I can reach it. Okay. Then this one. So you're just protecting the hose. Now look, there's like a thousand ways you can do this. This is just through trial and error, what I found works best. Feel free to comment the way you did it. Okay, so this is how we're gonna do this one. We're going to cut this right here. Like I said before, there's like a thousand different ways you can do this. This video would have been much shorter. If my garage was clean, but it is not. So, we are doing our best <clears throat> that bad boy under there like saw rotate it if we can
Okay. Still too much binding. Okay, again, this is a lot easier when you're not sweaty. Everything's slipping out of my hands. <sighs> okay, so it's gonna look like that. I'm gonna come up here, come up to this point. We've got another 90. Okay, so the last part of this overheating solution is to get it filled up. So what you're gonna do is because I don't have a machine what we're uh, to take the air out of the uh, system, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a process called burping. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're not gonna connect this yet. So you're gonna use a funnel. You're gonna fill up this side with coolant until it overflows from here. Then you're gonna put your funnel on this one and you're gonna fill up this side until the coolant overflows. You might wanna take your time because the air is gonna obviously mess with the levels of coolant inside your system. So you're just gonna slowly do it until you have coolant sitting right here. And you're gonna fill up this one right to the top. You're gonna to close that, clamp it all up. While leaving your cap on when you're filling all this up, once that's full, then you're gonna remove your cap. You're gonna notice there's nothing in there. So you're gonna fill this up with coolant to whatever level you would like. Uh, in between the minimum and maximum line, sorry. Once your coolant is where you want it, you're gonna leave the cap off and you're gonna start it. And you're gonna let it run until your fan comes on. Once your fan comes on, all the air will have circulated to the system and come up through the top of the reservoir. You then just let it sit. Once it's cool, you're gonna put your cap back on Go out and ride it. After your ride, take your cap off. Make sure your levels are fine. Once your levels are fine, you are good to go. And that's how you install a Wild Boar Rad Relocate Kit on a...